Hello. Today we're going to talk about series parallel combination circuits. We just have a single goal and this movie is a little bit different from our previous ones. This is basically a tutorial. Uh, we're going to do an example of the method for analyzing a circuit with resistors connected in series and parallel combinations. That's what we mean by series parallel combination circuits. And these resistors are connected together. You have multiple resistors but only a single battery. Okay, so here is the circuit that we're going to look at. We have four different resistors, wired as shown, and a single 12 volt battery. And the resistances of the various resistors are shown at the bottom. We've got a 6 ohm resistor, a 36 ohm resistor, a 12 ohm resistor, and a 3 ohm resistor. And when we say we're going to analyze the circuit, what that means is we want to find the current through each resistor as well as the voltage across each resistor. Okay, so what we're going to do, our method is going to be, we're going to start with this set of four, and then we're going to boil it down to three, and then to two, and then to one. And then we're going to expand it back out from one to two, two to three, three to four, and see what we get along the way. And the reason we have to boil it down to one uh, equivalent resistor is that then we can use Ohm's law very easily to figure out uh, the current provided to the to the circuit from the battery. As it is, it's a little bit difficult to find that. Uh, and this is not the only way to do this solution, but this is one of the common methods. Okay, so here we go. And where we start is we look at the circuit and we identify a pair of resistors that are either clearly in series with each other or which are clearly in parallel with each other. And then we use our equations for equivalent resistance in series or in parallel to replace them by a single equivalent resistor. And then once we've done that, then we find another pair that are either in series and parallel. Replace those by one, and then we do it again. Okay, And you keep doing that until you have a single resistor then you apply Ohm's law to find the current, and then you reverse the process. And as you expand it out, you find the current and voltage, current through each resistor and voltage across each resistor at every step. Okay, so just to keep in mind a couple of rules of thumb about this. When are resistors in series? Well, resistors are in series when they're basically connected in a chain. So Whatever current passes through one has no choice but to keep going and pass through the other one. So those two resistors would be in series in that case. On the other hand, two resistors are in parallel when they are directly tied together at one end and then directly tied together at the other end with nothing in between. Okay? The other thing is the current has to come along, split at one end of the two resistors, some passes through one resistor, some passes through the other, and then the current recombines at the other end. So it's a nice idea to actually draw the current on the circuit. So you can see these splits and recombines uh, as the current zooms around the circuit, as the, really the charges zoom around the, the circuit. Okay, so in this circuit, where do we start? So we need to identify two resistors that are clearly in parallel with each other, or clearly in series with each other. And in some circuits, there's more than one place to start. Okay, So in this circuit, we have, for instance, resistor 2 and resistor 3 are clearly in parallel with each other. So current would come, you can imagine current coming out of the positive terminal of the battery, flowing along to the first junction. Some goes down through R1, some goes to the right. Then the current splits the stuff that went to the right. Part goes through R2, part goes through R3, recombines, all that current goes through R4. And the R4 and the R1 current recombine and uh, go back to the battery. Okay. Uh, some people also look at this circuit and say, well, looks to me like R1 and R4 are in parallel with each other. But actually, they don't qualify. Okay. So the bottom ends of R1 and R4 are tied together. But the top ends of R1 and R4 are not directly connected together with nothing in between them. They clearly have this R2 and R3 uh, combination in between the tops. So they are not in parallel with each other. In fact, R1 
is actually in parallel with the whole R2, R3, and R4 branch of the circuit. Okay, so we actually do want to start with R2 and R3. And they are in parallel with each other. Okay, so we look at the values of R2 and R3, 36 ohms and 12 ohms. And we're going to replace those two by the equivalent resistance of, those, of that pair. Okay, so here's how we do it. Here's our equivalent resistance equation. So I'm going to call the replacement resistor the equivalent resistor R23. So we remind ourselves where it came from. It came from R2 and R3. So 1 over R23 is 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. That's 1 over 36 ohms plus 1 over 12 ohms. And then we want to put these fractions over a common denominator, which is uh, 36 ohms, in fact. So we have 1 over 36 ohms plus 3 over 36 ohms is 4 over 36 ohms. Now, always remember not to stop there, because this is what 1 over R23 is. So you've got to turn that equation upside down. So R23 is therefore 36 ohms divided by 4. So that's a nice uh, integer value, 9 ohms. Okay, so now R23 is now 9 ohms. Okay, so now we've done a good job here. We boiled our, uh, we've simplified our circuit. We've taken it from four resistors to three. Now we look at it again. We say, okay, I've got to find two resistors that are either in parallel with each other or in series with each other. And again, there's only in this circuit, there's only one place to go next. R23 and R4 are in series with each other. Uh, so the current, com again, comes out of the battery, positive side, comes up to that first junction, split, some goes down through R1, some goes to the right through R23. Whatever flows through R23 has to keep going and continue through R4. So R23 and R4 are in series. So it's pretty easy to find their equivalent resistance. So you simply add them together. So I'm going to call that whole combined resistor now R234, the equivalent resistance of 2, 3, and 4. And so it's just 9 ohms plus 3 ohms is 12 ohms. And so now we're getting a much simpler circuit. Now we've gone from four resistors to uh, two resistors. We have R1 and this resistor R234. And how are they connected? And again, if you think about what the current does, you can see how they're connected. So the current comes out of the battery, comes up to the top, splits at the junction, part goes through R1, part goes off through R234. Those currents come back together at the bottom and they will flow back to the negative terminal of the battery. So that is parallel. Those two things are in parallel. So then we break out our equation for adding resistors in parallel. And we've got a 6 ohm resistor and a 12 ohm resistor now. And that's going to boil down to 1 over REQ is 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12. Again, put them over a common denominator, which in this case works out to 12. So it's 2 twelfths, uh, uh, 2 over 12 ohms is what it is really, plus 1 over 12 ohms is 3 over 12 ohms. Once again, don't forget to flip this upside down. So REQ is now 12 ohms over 3, so that's 4 ohms. So that whole set of 4 we had originally is equivalent to a 4 ohm battery. Yeah, 4 ohm resistor, it's a resistor. And it's equivalent in what sense? In the sense that the battery sends out exactly the same amount of current to this 4 ohm resistor as it did to the original set of 4. Okay, so what can we do next? We've done all this work. Why did we do this? Well, so now we can apply Ohm's Law to find the current. So we find the current in the circuit by applying Ohm's Law. So the total current coming out of the battery is the battery voltage divided by the equivalent resistance of the circuit, which we did all the work for to find was uh, 4 ohms. So 12 volts over 4 ohms is 3 amps. Okay, so that's how much current the battery provides to the circuit. Okay, so that's great, but what we really want to know originally was what's the current through each of the original four resistors and the voltage across each of the original four. So this equivalent resistance 4 ohms is not any of the original 4, it's a combination of the 4. So what we're going to do next is work backwards. Now we're going to split this up in reverse order 
and recreate step by step the circuit we started with and we'll use these numbers, the voltage and current numbers, to help us find the voltage and current through each resistor at each step. Okay, so we're going to expand the circuit back in reverse order. Remember what we had was this 4 ohm resistor came from two resistors, a 6 ohm resistor and a 12 ohm resistor in parallel. So we're going to split this 4 ohm resistor into those two resistors in parallel. So there's the 6 and the 12 that the uh, 4 ohm came from. Now, when you split a resistor up into a parallel combination, what happens is the voltage across the single resistor, single equivalent resistor, is the same as the voltage across each of the resistors that are in parallel. So we keep the 12 volts that we had across the 4 ohm resistor. We see 12 volts across the 6 ohm resistor and 12 volts across the 12 ohm resistor. And then we take the 3 amps and we split it up. Okay, and you can split it up by applying Ohm's law, right? You can say, okay, I've got 12 volts across a resistor of 6 ohms. Delta V is I times R. Therefore, I is delta V over R. 12 volts over 6 is 2 amps. Apply that to this, the other resistor. 12 volts over 12 ohms gets me 1 amp. Okay, so I get 2 amps through the 6 ohm resistor, 1 amp through the 12 ohm resistor. Is that what I should have? Let's see. I had 3 amps coming out of the battery. And I should have a total of 3 amps going through the two resistors. 2 amps plus 1 amp is 3. Great. So everything looks good. Voltages make sense. The, amp, the uh, currents make sense. Okay. So once again, you split a resistor up into the parallel pair it came from. You keep the voltage. You split the current. You divide the current. And of course, current prefers the path of least resistance, which is why we have more current going through the smaller resistor. And the resistances are different by a factor of two, so our currents are different by a factor of two in the opposite way. Okay, so now we're going to take the uh, 12 ohm resistor and split it up into the two things in series that it came from. Okay, and when you split up things in series, you keep the current and you divide the voltage, opposite to what you do in, uh, in parallel. Okay. So we split the 12 ohm resistor up into a 9 ohm resistor and the 3 ohm resistor we had when we had three resistors shown in our circuit. But you keep the current. Okay, so now you've got 9 ohms with 1 amp of current going through it, 3 ohms with a 1 amp of current going through it. Check the voltage using Ohm's law. Okay, delta V is I times R. For the 9 ohm resistor with 1 amp, 9 volts. For the 3 ohm resistor and 1 amp, 3 volts. Okay, should we expect those numbers to be those? To be those numbers, 9 volts and 3 volts. Well, those two numbers have to add up to the voltage we had across the 12 ohm resistor at the previous stage step. And indeed, 9 volts and 3 volts is equal to 12 volts. Okay, okay so you can always check your answers as you go through. Make sure you do that. Okay, so again, you expand a resistor back into a series combination. The current stays the same. The voltage has to divide according to Ohm's law. And always check that the sum of the two voltages is the voltage you had across that equivalent resistor. And that is true in this case. OK, so we're almost done. Now we have our 9 ohm resistor. And the 9 ohm resistor was not in the original circuit. There was a parallel pair there that uh, had a resistance equivalent to 9. So we're going to split that 9 up into the two original resistors we had that were in parallel with each other. And once again, when we do that, we're going to keep the voltage, and we have to divide the current. OK, so here we go. Now we've got the original resistors we started with. So it wasn't 9 ohms there. In fact, it was 36 ohms in parallel with a 12 ohm resistor. We keep the voltage, and then we can calculate the current using Ohm's law. So I is delta V over R. So when you do that for the 36 ohms, you get 9 volts over 36 ohms is 1 over 4. That's 0.25 amps. For the 12 ohm resistor, you get 9 volts over 12 ohms. That is 3 quarters of an amp, 0.75 amps. So you get 0.25 amps through the 36 ohm resistor, 0.75 amps through the 12 ohm resistor, and they add up to the 1 amp that we had through our uh, 9 ohm resistor that we 
showed when we had three resistors shown in the circuit. Okay, so that is the basic process of when you have a series parallel combination circuit with a single battery, you can just step by step contract it from n resistors to n minus 1 to n minus 2 all the way down to one resistor. Then you apply Ohm's law to find the current in the circuit. Then you expand it back out step by step. When you blow out a resistor into a parallel pair, you keep the voltage, you split the currents. When you blow out a resistor into the series pair, you keep the current, you divide the voltage. Okay, so that is our little tutorial on that method for analyzing a circuit where you have resistors that are in combinations of series and parallel.